Hello everyone, my name is Keith Wangkai. In this video, I'll just be casually rambling about how me, as an average ass person, was able to top the physician licensure exam, get a step 1 score of 250 plus, and a step 2 score of 260 plus, which translates to about 90th percentile depending on the reference you use. I made this video in the hopes to maybe inspire a few people like myself while also wanting to share certain study methods, resources, and material that I've used that helped me improve tremendously. Anyway, just a brief history slash profile of myself. I've never been an honor student during grade school and high school, never received Latin awards in college, wasn't even top 10 of my med school either, far from it. As you can see, as plain as can be. Anyway, let's just go ahead and get to the meat of the video. How did I get these scores? I'll be dividing the video into two parts. First, I'll just be discussing the resources I used. Then second, I'll be discussing my strategy. So for resources, I'll be recommending three. The first one is Anki. And yes, this is the part where I'll be geeking out about Anki. To those who aren't familiar, Anki is basically a flashcard app or program. I say basically, but there's actually more to it than that. Anki has a built-in algorithm that works in a way that if you keep answering a specific flashcard correctly, it will move the flashcard further away in time, which leads you to see it less frequently. In contrast, if you keep answering a specific flashcard wrong, it will most likely keep showing up more frequently. The fancy term for this is known as space repetition. This was a game changer for me because I really, really needed the repetition for me to memorize material. And to do it in a way that was organized, scheduled, and software-based that I can answer through my PC or phone was very, very appealing to me. Truth be told, Anki isn't for everyone. It's not gonna magically increase your grades just because. You'll still have to put in time and effort, more on that later. The downside to Anki is that it does kinda have a steep learning curve. It's very difficult to make good quality Anki flashcards, and even if you do use pre-made Anki decks, there's still an issue of time, actually answering the cards versus balancing your schoolwork. Anyway, I plan to make a follow-up tutorial on Anki in the Filipino med school setting for all those that plan to get into Anki or are currently using Anki, using pretty much the experience I've gained in retrospect throughout the past 7 years or so. I hope you guys will look forward to that because I plan to get into the nitty gritty technicalities of it. It won't be as shit posty as this video. Also because I truly believe Anki is a revolutionary way to studying. You just have to make sure to use it correctly. After Anki, the second resource I strongly recommend is Amboss. Honestly, I wish I knew or was subscribed to Amboss much sooner. And I wish my med school included it in their list of subscriptions that they had for their students. From what I've seen, Amboss is usually thought of as a question bank website, which I will say is very good. But the true value of Amboss is actually in its encyclopedia or database. You can just type something like polymyalgia rheumatica and AMBOSS will basically show you an outline of everything you'll need to know, which shows you the pathogenesis, how you diagnose, and how you even manage a patient. It even includes doses, which I feel like makes it still useful post-med school. There are even options to toggle high yield mode if you're into that. AMBOSS also has an app on your phone that can be used offline, which I know I definitely use a lot of times during clerkship and internship. I found this super useful when I had to quickly refer to something, if I'm ever out in the clinical setting. If you've ever used up to date, and you should if your school has a subscription for it, Amboss is pretty much just a simplified and outlined version of up to date. I've actually compared the two side by side a lot of times on different topics, and the content they have is pretty much in line 95% of the time. Amboss also covers basic science topics like physiology, biochemistry, anatomy, and etc. So it pretty much covers everything you'll need to learn from your first year of med school, even after med school. It also has some of the best graphs and figures I've seen in the medical setting. I mean, just take a look at this photo of Hodgkin lymphoma, for example. You can toggle an overlay on and off just to actually understand what they're talking about. They even have stuff for imaging, like for example, what a pneumothorax would look like. Again, you can just toggle the overlay on and off. It's super good. I think the only downside to Amboss, and I put this with an asterisk, is the price. It costs about $100 or so for a year subscription to their encyclopedia, which might be a tough ask. 
especially for the Filipino setting. But if you're already buying a bunch of textbooks and you have to ask me which one you should buy, I honestly easily say Amboss. I feel like their asking price is actually super cheap considering how much information I actually learned from them. Not to mention their advantage of being a software-based platform, which means that they can easily update content unlike textbooks. No exaggeration, but when I was still studying for the step exams and even the PLE, I was using Amboss pretty much every day just to cross refer. By the way, Amboss, if you're watching this, I definitely didn't make this video in the hopes of you guys gifting me a free subscription to my Amboss account. But if you insist, my email's at the description below. <clears throat> Moving on, the last resource I recommend is First Aid. I realize this is US Emily material, but I truly believe memorizing first aid from cover to cover really translated well into my performance in the PLE and of course the USMLE. First aid mostly covers basic science material like pharma and patho anyway, and that doesn't really change from country to country so it's a very safe choice for material to study. It doesn't contain all the need to know information, especially for clinical subjects like surgery, OB, medicine, and etc. But essentially every information in first aid is need to know. If you don't know what to study, I feel like first aid is a great resource for that. Just pick it up and start memorizing everything in it. In some ways, you can consider first aid as a very high yield trance that just doesn't cover clinical subjects. Okay, now on to the actually juicy part. My strategy for getting better scores. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you guys, and it's a very, very boring answer. I think deep down we all know how to actually do it, even if the answer is boring. But my secret is I essentially just studied every day. No exaggeration, literally every single day. Even as of recording this, I haven't missed a beat. Here's my Anki streak as proof. I have been studying every day for almost three years in a row now. The time I took to study for step one was about one year. The time to PLE was about 10 months. And the time to step two was about seven months after. For the average person like myself, I've long since come to the conclusion that I'll have to put in the extra effort to get the results I want, even more so proportionally than the quote-unquote gifted people. And this is the part where my inner weeb will show a bit, but you just gotta have that rockly mentality in a way. If life gets hard, circumstances are against you, or some dude with magic eyes can copy every ninjutsu just by looking at it once it comes into your life, you just need to ask yourself, what would Rock Lee do? If you've never watched Naruto, the answer is he'll deal with it and work even harder. You might be wondering now how do I find time for anything else? Well, it's easy if I have no life. But in all seriousness, this is where the magic of Anki comes in. If you use it right, Anki makes studying very simple to do and almost gamifies it. It's easy to just open it up on your phone, spend it half an hour or so throughout the day doing your flashcards and just be done with it. Whereas studying every single day is working hard, I consider studying every day through active recall via Anki as working smarter. When you have that combination of working hard and working smart, I think pretty much anyone, even a dumbass like myself, is bound to get results. That's why Anki is such a game changer to me. But anyway, that's a subject for another video. Regardless of how you decide to study with Anki or not, and you definitely don't need Anki to be successful, you're gonna have to put in the effort. Anyway, I think this just about wraps it up before this video gets too long. Feel free to ask any questions through the email I put in the description. I'm more likely to respond there. Thanks for watching, and I wish you guys the very best.